uh, and, and it's just good. There's good when new things are starting up, and, and we're in a new season. The fall is a fun time when a lot of us get back from the summertime, and we get ready to go. We get ready to see what God can actually do uh, through us. And it's not that we don't do that in the summer, but there's something about all of us getting back together and, and putting our hearts together, putting our minds together, putting our shoulders together to the work and getting moving and seeing what can happen. It's an exciting season. And when things are exciting, sometimes we just want to talk about them. We just want to share about them. As I was considering that this week and prepping for, for this uh, service, I was thinking about a moment in my life where something, someone was so excited about something and shared it a little prematurely. Uh, I, when Kendall was pregnant with our first kid, uh, Isabella, she, we, we were trying to decide at what point are we going to tell everyone uh, what, that we're having a baby and should we wait a while or what. And we decided it's our first baby. Let's wait until we're out of the first trimester. We'll wait until 13 weeks to sort of make it public. I was pastoring at a church of 1,800 at the time. And so a lot of people would have known pretty quick if I had shared it. So we, we sort of wanted to keep it for a while. Uh, but we started to tell a few of our family members. And, and I don't know if you have some family members who, when they get excited, they start to share a little bit, start to let people know a few things. Well, my mom happens to be one of those. She's a hairdresser. Sometimes that goes along with hairdressers, you know, chat, and, and here we go. But anyway, she's a hairdresser, and, uh, and so she goes to the same church as us, and, and uh, I, was, I often was on stage or speaking, and, my, and Kendall was often on stage in worship. And so there's this one day, we've told my mom, we haven't told anyone else, we said, you know, keep it quiet, don't let anyone know, this is just our little thing right now, we'll leave it alone. Well, my mom is, is in the service. She's sitting near the back. I'm at the front. I wasn't there for the experience, but I can imagine that she's just kind of doing one of these, right? I've got a secret in my heart, and again, I locked the key, and then I found the key, and I unlocked it again. And, and she's just sitting at the back doing her thing, and, and, uh, and, and Kendall comes up, and she's on, she's on worship. And I can just picture my mom. There she is. And she, all of a sudden, she's a point, knocks on the shoulder of the person in front of her. Not a friend, not a family member, a stranger. Um, and says, excuse me, <laughs> hey, um, that's my daughter-in-law up there. She goes, oh, great. Oh, that's my friend. I'm friends with Kendall. And uh, at that point, that should have been a good cue for my mom. Don't tell, you know. There's a friend. She knows us. Like, just leave it alone. We would like to tell her. She goes, oh, okay. She's pregnant. <laughs> Mom. Like, what are you doing? So this lady, this, this lady comes up to us after the service and says, um, so I think I might know something that you don't want me to know, and I thought I should tell you who told me so that you can uh, put an end to her, it. <laughs> put an end to it. You can put an end to all of the talking, right? And so she tells us this and says, well, Kendall, it's your mother-in-law. And Kendall walks back there and just, oh, phew, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but uh, uh, some people just, you know, they get a little bit more excited, and their excitement overflows a little more frequently, don't they? They just get a little bit pumped. But any of us, once that excitement level gets to a certain level, it's like it just overwhelms us. We can't handle it anymore. we got to spit it out. It's got to go somewhere. Leave me information. I need to share it with someone. It's too exciting. And I, I, we have that in, in all sorts of different areas in our life. But I feel like this might just be a year. It might just be a year where, where we're actually going to feel that about our faith. We're going to actually feel that about our church. Because sometimes we, you know, we can feel that way about other things. But when it comes to our faith or our church, you know, people say, how was Sunday? Sunday was good. Yeah. Did you go to church? Mm, yeah, sure did. Went to church. How was it? how's your Sunday, you know? And we just don't really share. We don't really say what's going on in our heart. Some of us, we have big things happen in our spiritual life. You know, you read your Bible and like, wow, there's something that just hits you and you love it and it's amazing. And you, you come to church and you tell everyone about it and you leave the church and someone says, so, well, you know, what have you been up to? And I, uh, and I could tell them about the Bible I've been reading and what happened. No, you know, nothing really. Like, what have you been up to? And we just kind of don't share. And I've been thinking about this this week. 
How can I, as a pastor and a leader in this church, how can I cause a high school student to start to share about their faith in their school? How can I help a, 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 you know, a contractor, a business person, help to share their faith with the, with the clients they have? How can I help the chatty hairdresser just my mom, uh, share while they're ch- ch- cutting hair about what's going on in their church and their life. How can I help someone learn to share some of these things? How can I get people speaking? And so I decided, well, let's go back to the Bible and see how Jesus did it. Because with the disciples, they all started sharing and talking and speaking about what was going on. And all of a sudden, everyone was looking on and seeing what was going on with Jesus. So how did Jesus do it? What did he say to get them to start speaking about it? And actually, what Jesus said is, shh, don't tell anyone. And then like, blah, 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 and tell everyone. So what was going on, it wasn't that they were learning how to speak, it's that they were part of a faith that was so overwhelmingly exciting that they couldn't help speak about it. I don't want to, as your pastor, as this week's gone on, has prayed about this and taken more time with this, I don't want to, as your pastor, teach you how to share about a faith that you're not actually excited about. I want to teach you how to walk into a faith that's exciting. I want to teach you how to, I want to be part of you walking into something that's thrilling for you, that's so exciting for you, that there's, there's miracles happening in your life that is flowing up and you just can't help but share about it. That's what we see scripturally. We don't see the training class say, how do you share about your mundane faith? It's how do you not share about your miraculous life with Jesus? How do you not? And this is what it starts to be like in the Bible. And we want, to, we want to get to that place together. I feel like the internship is going to help us. I feel like these people pushing together, dreaming together, praying together, fighting together, doing all of this together, growing in their way, growing in character, growing in their maturity, growing in their discipleship is going to cause all of us to get swept up into a little bit of a movement that's a little bit too exciting not to share. I want to look at one of the stories of Jesus when he, when he has one of these moments when he tells them not to share about it. And they're, they're sort of just doing their normal life. Jesus would walk with his disciples and they'd cruise down the road. And as they carried on, they'd be doing miraculous things. They had a naturally supernatural way about them. And so as they got to this one spot, we're going to catch up with the story. It's in Mark 7, 31 to 37. It says, Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went down to Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hands on him. So they bring this guy who can't hear and can't speak or can barely speak. This is starting to become become common practice for them. And and, and so this guy shows up and people say, would you just heal him, Jesus? Heal him. Do it. Heal him. And so what Jesus does next is he is, I'm going to spoiler alert, he is going to heal him. But there's something crazy about how it happened. It says, after he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears. Isn't that kind of crazy? Like, hey, okay, sure, um, come with me, you know, walk over here. What will he, you know, like, What is that? He could have spoken. He could have said. He could have done all these things. But Jesus sticks his fingers in the guy's ears. It's sort of funny scene. Imagine his disciples. Don't worry. It's going to be. It's going to be good. Jesus is with him now, and he's going to heal. Ding! And he puts it. And then the next thing is sort of gets a little bit crazier, a little bit more. It says, "Then he spit and touched the man's tongue." Wow! Like what a moment! Oh, isn't this? Jesus always does. He does this all the time. He heals people. It's going to be okay. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about your friend. Jesus heals them. Come on over. Stick out your tongue. I'm going to spit on it. And we're going to see something happen here. And what is going on? You can imagine the moment. Where like, what is happening? I've never seen that one before. Have, what the, okay, we'll try it. And, and Jesus like just does all this, and then it says the guy starts speaking plainly. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. I always wonder what someone says in that moment. What is plain talk at that point? Eh? He began to speak plainly. Thank you very much. That was a very nice experience. (laughs) Bye-bye. 
you know. You can imagine what it, what it would have been like. That, that, was, that was extremely uncomfortable for a moment. I wasn't sure what you were doing with my ears and why you spit on my tongue. Uh, but thank you. I'm carrying on. Uh, I, I don't know what he would have said. Probably like, what in the world just happened? I can't hear you. And I'm speaking to you. I'm telling you I can hear you. Two miracles in one sentence. Like, this is incredible, right? And the disciples are looking on like, what? This is awesome. We've never seen Jesus do it that way. It's so fun. He's always so full of surprises. I can't wait to tell everyone. It's going to be awesome. And Jesus says, uh, do not tell anyone. Right, right, Jesus. No problem. We won't tell anybody. You know, they both they go tell everyone. You can't not tell this. You can't not share this thing. They can't not speak about it. It says, the more he told them not to tell anyone, the more they kept talking about it. It's had to. Sometimes we're trying to think of how we're going to share our faith. What if instead it's about having to share our faith because it's so crazy what's going on. It's so amazing what's happening. I can't even believe what just went on. I got to tell you, it's crazy so much that when God says, no, 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 don't talk about it. This is the one area that you disobey. Like, they're obeying him in every other area. Sounds good, Jesus. We won't do that. We won't do that. We won't. He says, shh, don't tell anyone. They're like, yeah, right, Jesus. I don't care if you're God. I need to go tell people about this. You just went to ding. <laughs> we got to tell them. It says that people were overwhelmed with amazement. That word caught me this week. Because when we're overwhelmed by Jesus in our life, we speak. When we're underwhelmed, we don't. Based on how much you speak about Jesus or how much you speak about your church experience, are you overwhelmed or underwhelmed? Are you underwhelmed to the point of not really sharing anything or are you overwhelmed to the point of I cannot share enough? See, some of us, we think, I just need to figure out how to get the courage to share. The courage to share will just happen to you if instead you pray for the faith to stick your fingers in ears and see healings happen. You can't not share that. Grocery store, you're getting your groceries, you know. So how's your day? Fine. Stuck my fingers in some ears and they heard. You can't not share that. Whoops, sorry, I, I'm not supposed to share. You can't not. But for us, instead, we're sort of trying to whip up something that we're excited about. Well, yeah, you know, I go to church, and usually I'm trying to hold my eyes open. Um, how can I pitch this in an exciting way to my grocer? You can't because it's not exciting for you. But is there something that would be? Do you pray that Jesus would use you for miracles? Do you ask him that he would use you to change your workplace environment or your family or your school or your hockey team? Do you ask him to move in you in such ways that you would see miracles take place uh, in, in, in the old folks' home that you live in? Do you ask him to move in such a way that when you're, when you're watching your kids play sports, that you would actually see miracles take place with the parents and the kids around you? Do you ask him to do that in you? Or instead, are you, are you trying to figure out how to talk about the faith that you're not actually that excited about? Anyways, God wants you to be part of something amazing, not boring. Instead of us trying to figure out how to talk about the faith that we're not that excited about, what would it look like to believe for a faith that is exciting? Miracles taking place around our lives. Incredible things happening. If so, we wouldn't be able to help but share it. Luke 6, or 9, 6 to 9, there's this moment... And right after Jesus has sent out the 12 disciples, he sent them out and said, listen, go. I want you to talk about the kingdom of God. I want you to tell them that I'm here and it's happening and it's going to be good. And I want you to heal everyone and I want you to cast out demons. So go and do it. And it says, so they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. So it was happening. And then it says, now Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was going on and he was perplexed. Herod, the head of all this. Herod's not a Christian. Probably most of the people around him weren't Christians. 
So who's he hearing about the disciples from? Probably not followers of Jesus. It's other people talking about it. It's not only us that starts to talk. Sometimes we think, how are we going to share about Jesus? What if your life looks so radically different than those around you that Christians don't even talk about it? It's the the non-believers, the people that don't even know anything about Jesus that start saying, I don't know what's going on with those 12 people. I don't know what's happening with that kid in this high school. I don't know what's happening in this university. I don't know what's happening in that family. I don't know how that restoration came to take place. I can't understand it. I am perplexed. Wouldn't it be awesome if our mayor was perplexed this year because of what the interns are up to? Wouldn't it be awesome? Perplexing. It's perplexing to see what's going on with these young people. What if all of a sudden we clean up a whole area? What if all of a sudden we, we paint some run-down building? What if all of a sudden the homeless are finding homes? And what if all of a sudden orphans and widows are being taken care of because the church is ignited? What if all of a sudden we're seeing incredible things take place like that? What if all of a sudden they're sharing about Jesus and we're seeing people healed in the Comox Valley? What if all of a sudden things like that are happening? It's not just Christians that will talk about it. It'll be people who don't believe that start to say, I- I'm perplexed. Why don't we go and talk about this? What is happening here? I want our city to have a perplexing experience because of this church. That would be awesome. They're talking about it. They can't help but talk about it, even to Herod. And then it says, some were saying that John has been raised from the dead, others that Elijah had appeared, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had come back to life. But Herod said, I beheaded John. Who then is this? I hear such things about. And he tried to see him. If your life is so filled with the miraculous work of Jesus, those who don't believe will be perplexed and will want to see the one who's made you that way. It's Jesus. Your life will point to Jesus. We always think that our words need to point to Jesus. I I, I think that's probably true. I think we do need to speak sometimes. But I would rather if our speaking came out of just, I can't help it because my life is so all about Jesus. And I'm seeing miracles happening all around me. I want that. In in Acts 4 to 20, Peter And John are brought before the Sanhedrin, the lawmakers of the time. Jesus has died and risen from the dead at this point. And they've seen all these miracles. They've seen all this stuff happen. And they're in trouble because they healed a guy on the street. And they healed a guy on the street in Jesus' name. And these people said, you need to stop saying the name of Jesus. You can keep healing people. Just stop saying by which power you're doing it. Don't talk about Jesus anymore. And they say this response. And this is the response that I want our interns to have this year. The response that I want to see rise up in our church. How we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. They're standing before the lawmakers. The lawmakers are saying, ah, you can't talk about Jesus anymore. And they're saying, we physically, literally cannot help it. It's just flowing out of us. Healings are happening. People are coming to know Jesus by the thousands. A dead guy on a cross is changing all of Rome. Sorry, (laughs) we can't help it. Wouldn't it be awesome if we got to see that here and now? Worship team, you can come on up here and get ready. We're about to play an intern video. I want you to meet the interns, but just before we do, I just want to pray for you. Because, because I don't want to try to convince you to talk to someone about Jesus and try to convince you to talk to someone about your church experience here. Though I want Jesus to be made known and I want this church to grow and become incredibly influential in the Comox Valley and reach thousands and thousands of people, well, I don't want to convince you to try to talk about it. I want to convince you to ask God to help you live such an amazing life that others want to talk about it. That others want to talk about your life because of how Jesus is changing people through you. So if you want that for your life today, 
This is if you showed up and you didn't even know Jesus or you've been part of this church forever. If you want that for today, I want to pray for you. So if you want that, say, I want the life that, that's, that people would talk about because Jesus is so impacting to me. I want the life that bubbles over so I can't help but speaking about it. If that's you, you want to live that kind of life, why don't you just raise your hand so I can pray for you. That's everyone. Every, if you want it, you can go for it. If you want that for you today, this is you just saying, God, I want to have that kind of life. The life that I'm not trying to figure figure out how will I talk about something that's kind of boring to me, but instead, how will I allow God to move in me so that my life is exciting and crazy and passionate and overwhelmingly full, that others might even talk about it. Jesus, you see our hands, you see our hearts. Fill us. Fill us, Holy Spirit, with power. Let us walk in ways that are not the same as everyone around us. Let us walk in courage. Let us believe for healing. Let us see miracles take place. I pray for thousands, literally thousands this year to come to know Jesus. I pray for a cultural shift in the Comox Valley. Lord, I pray that the the homeless would find homes, that the broken would find healing. Lord, that the addicted would be set free in Jesus' name. We pray today, Lord, that you would put broken homes back together. Jesus, that orphans in this town would not exist because they're adopted in Jesus, that widows in this town would be supported because of the church in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that as it happens, you would bubble up over us, we would not help, not be able to help speak about what we've seen and heard. And Jesus, that others would start speaking about what they've seen and heard, that city councilors and mayors would start to look and say, I need to see what it is that made these people do it. Our hands will be pointing to you. (laughs) We don't need to figure out a strategy for how to speak about you. We need to figure out how to live for you and watch others speak about the impact that this church even makes in the Comox Valley. We want to be part of it, Lord. We want to be part of it. Empower the interns. Empower individuals in this church. Empower this church collectively that we would lead for you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on.